Graduate entry medicine is one of the things that hundreds of people who want to train to be doctors find themselves thinking about each year. But if you need to do an undergraduate degree first, which is the best degree choice before graduate entry medicine? Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ollie and I'm a final year medical student at the University of Warwick. Now, obviously the title of this video is a little bit misleading, a little bit clickbaity as we like to be here on YouTube. There is no single best undergrad degree when you're thinking about graduate entry medicine, I'll give you that much. However, it's something I get asked about a lot and I think it's important that we discuss the ups and downs of doing different types of degree when you're thinking about going to medical school later on. Firstly, I think it's important that we address why someone might be thinking about a degree before going to medical school. And the simple answer to that often is competition. Medical school is one of the most competitive courses you can study at university, not just in the UK, but generally speaking across the world. In the UK, it has a competition ratio of around 10 to one. That means for every single place at medical school that you're thinking of applying for, there will be at least nine other people, usually also gunning for that same place. And this obviously leads to very large numbers of people, relatively speaking, not getting a place at medical school. And generally speaking, I think we can conceptualize two main categories that, that this generates for medical school, which is people who were not accepted for whatever reason the first time around. So for example, if their grades weren't up to scratch or they didn't have the work experience or whatever, they might decide to retake some portion of their A-levels, or at least they might have under the old system, or they might decide to pursue some other degree first and then apply for medicine later once they've got their degree. Or alternatively, you have people who have little to no interest in medicine at the kind of normal age when people go to university and they develop some interest or aspiration to become a doctor further down the line and then they decide it's the right time for them. This video is going to concentrate on the first subset of these people. People who know they want to do medicine and are in a position where they need to choose a different degree to study first but aren't sure what to pick. So the first and perhaps most obvious choice that most people jump to is either biomedical sciences or something like medical sciences because it sounds a lot like medicine and it's often seen as the kind of tried and true way of doing it. Statistically, it's what most people will put as their fifth choice, because remember on the UCAS form, only four of your five choices can be for medicine. So usually people will use the fifth choice for a similar sounding course, as I say, either biomed, medical sciences, something like that. However, controversial as I like to be, I have some problems with this approach. Firstly, from a lot of young people I talk to, there tends to be some implication that studying biomedical sciences or medical sciences. Essentially, when I'm talking to young people in this situation, there are two main things that I come across. First is that a lot of people feel that studying biomedical sciences or medical sciences, just to keep using these degrees as examples, will make them better or more suitable candidates for medical school in the long run. That's not true. And the other element to this is that the content they feel will be similar to what they will go on and study at medical school and therefore that will be advantageous as well. That's more true but it has problems associated with it. Because these degrees ultimately differ from medicine and medical school in the way that virtually all degrees do, where you are studying a narrow range of subjects in much depth. The emphasis is not on big picture learning and synthesis of everything you know. Whereas medical school is kind of the opposite of that, learning lots of things in small amounts of depth and synthesizing and collecting them all together, which has to be studied for and conceptualized in a completely different way. And secondly, I think the reason that this is seen as the, the tried and true method, as I said before, is that we have to think about the genuinely enormous numbers of places that are available for biomedical sciences and medical sciences places on courses across the UK. And I personally think that universities are very wise to this idea that a staggering percentage of anyone who isn't successful in getting into medical school will go and snap up these places, which is why they dangle that carrot of, oh, we've got an infinitesimally small number of places, like five a year, 
and if you do really really well will transfer you to medicine or dentistry. The problem with that obviously is that your odds of getting one of those places are then even smaller than they were of going to medical school in the first instance. However, there are some definite advantages more broadly to studying at least a science-based undergraduate if you're thinking about graduate entry medicine, and that's simply for the reason that more GEM programs than not will ask for a science degree specifically. And if you guys want, you know, when we get closer to application season, we can actually do a video running through every single graduate entry course and looking at the options available. Forgive me here, just because I've written down some examples. Birmingham Graduate Entry Medicine wants a Life Sciences degree, King's College London wants Biosciences or Nursing, they specify, and Liverpool want Biological Sciences or Health Sciences more generally. By contrast, places like Newcastle, Warwick, Cambridge will accept people with any degree. For graduate entry medicine. But I think the thing to remember, rightly or wrongly, is that if you do a sciences degree, particularly in the health sciences or the biosciences, that will allow you access to the full gamut of graduate entry medicine courses when you're thinking about applying, whereas obviously if you don't do that, you will be limited only to the courses that accept people of any discipline, so your, your odds are smaller in that sense. This also leads to a knock-on effect, where it changes the entrance exams that you might have to think about taking. Obviously, if you do your sciences degree and you can apply to virtually any university you want, you can be much more selective when you're thinking about whether to take the UCAT, the BMAT or the GAMSAT, the three entrance exams. Obviously, if your pool of choices is much smaller, that may necessitate taking tests like the GAMSAT, the most difficult one, I would argue, purely to give yourself more choice. Essentially, you have less liberty to apply strategically once you get through to application phase. There is also the argument that as a science student, you will have support and more access to departments that will be more helpful when you're trying to get onto a medical program, because these departments often have much more experience in sending students that way. For example, if you're working in the health sciences, it's just statistically far, far more likely that you will end up working alongside doctors, other clinicians and research scientists that will have those connections to the health service. And you may even be able to get involved in projects and research and things like that, which can get published in PubMed index journals. And if you're lucky enough to be able to do that, that will actually help once you become a doctor you know, many years down the line and you're thinking about your foundation jobs or... Lastly, I think the other main argument is that you will be familiar, at least with some of the core concepts. You will know what proteins are. You might know the basics or the very deep details of some disease processes. Now, again, this is something I talk about a lot. I would very much question whether knowing that stuff in detail will actually help you with medical school. And I've found at least that oftentimes it can be as unhelpful already having some idea of the relevant concepts as it is helpful because medical schools are very didactic they want you to know it as they teach you and it's not the case in medicine that extra knowledge will score you more marks the exams just don't work like that but familiarity will be helpful at least i think because you're not being thrown completely in at the deep end and i do need to very quickly address the kind of elephant in the room which is other more clinical courses so i'm talking specifically about things like nursing midwifery physiotherapy occupational therapy sort of subjects allied to medicine anyway a weird thing i found is that a lot of people seem to think that doing one of these courses will give you some sort of statistical advantage or means you have to take less modules or something in medical school. No, anyone who trains to be a doctor, no matter what your background is, you have to do literally the exact same process just so that everyone's on the same playing field. But the one advantage these courses will have, obviously, is that you're well used to the healthcare environment. Someone like me, who came from purely a lab sciences background and wasn't even able to do work experience in hospital, um, when you get into that environment, it's completely new and kind of alien. Whereas obviously, if you're more familiar with how the NHS actually works, and you'll probably have seen a lot of the disease management and patient contact stuff, that would actually be very helpful. That said, the one thing that I would be aware of is that not all of these clinical degrees actually satisfy the requirements of a science degree for the purposes of applying to medical school. And that purely, I think, for better or worse, is that the understanding of the basic sciences, the underlying biochemistry, physiology, so on, is not taught 
um, during, say, nursing degrees, for example, because you don't need those things in the depth that other people will have them to do that job very successfully. So that's something that I'd be keen to check. So I realise at this point in the video, you're very much thinking like, Jesus Christ, why would anyone do an arts degree if you're thinking about GEM specifically? There are a few really good reasons. Possibly most important one is that you are simply not interested in doing an undergraduate sciences degree before going to medical school. And that's fine, because one of the major keystones to applying for medical school as graduate is your undergraduate degree. You have to have that, usually to a 2-1 standard. There are some schools that accept a 2-2, but a 2-1 is the gold standard for medical school. And it stands to reason, I think, that you're only going to do well in a given degree, probably, if you're interested in that degree and you have some sort of passion and enthusiasm for it. And I think the reality is, is that if you're not bothered about going to do biomedical sciences or cell biology like I did, but you're more interested in your politics, your history, your music, your arts, and you think you'd be really passionate about studying those subjects, then go ahead. That was probably the better choice. It's your time and your money. And the more enthusiastic you are, the better you're likely to do. You know, you might be looking at a first class degree instead of a 2-1 or a 2-2 that you might get in the sciences degree. Basically what I'm saying is if you're going, basically what I'm saying is don't go to uni with a graduate entry medicine in mind to do a subject where you're unlikely to get a 2-1. I would consider that by definition a waste of your time and realistically a waste of your money. You've got to do something that you're motivated to do. Otherwise you will struggle to finish it and three years is a long time to be doing something you don't want to do. It's also very much the case that non-science graduates tend to think and formulate answers to problems in a very different way to people who've been trained under the scientific method. Scientific education, I think for perfectly good reasons, tends to drive you down a very systematic, hard, logical, positivist, kind of data-driven approach to problem solving. And I know that's how I tend to operate, for example. But particularly in the clinical sciences, in the real world, in a health setting, obviously what you find is that people do not behave as logical decision makers. They are not machines. People will surprise you constantly. <laughs> And so actually having people around in a clinical decision-making capacity as, as doctors who obviously understand the same science as I do, but think very differently about how to interact with people and about how other people think, that can only be really helpful for the medical workforce. And it's well known, for example, that some medical schools who will remain nameless very much have a reputation. And it's rather well known, for example, just as an aside, that some medical schools who will remain nameless, have a reputation for producing very excellent scientists, you know, well-published, very smart, highly academic people that are useless at actually talking to patients, which obviously is a huge part of being a doctor. And that's because they don't tend to have those soft skills that people who come from outside the scientific world they tend to develop them really well and be really good with people. And it's also the case, it may please you to know, that non-science grads, um, at least here at Warwick, compared to their more scientific peers, score as well, on average, or better than their scientific peers. And that's potentially for a whole host of reasons. But will you academically be at any kind of disadvantage? No. In fact, the top three people in my year in terms of exam results are all non-science grads. They've smoked everyone else, including the people like me, who went through three years of science education. And regardless of any of these things, you always have to remember that access, whether that's access to healthcare courses or access to medicine or dentistry courses, will pretty much always exist, regardless of the pathway choices that you make. In some fashion, there will always be some way of getting you back on the track to going to medical school. So to actually have a go after this very long meandering video about answering what is the best undergraduate degree to do before GEM, there isn't one. However, on paper, if I was going to make recommendations, I'd probably have to say do a sciences degree that you're interested in. I think the data bears that out purely for that flexibility when you're thinking about applying later on. However, will that be for everyone? No. As I said, I think the most important thing when you're deciding what's right for you is picking a degree that you're going to enjoy, that you can last three years in, 
and you can get your 2-1 in. But when it comes to applying to medicine generally, go for it. As I've said before, if you think you would make a good doctor, whether that's tomorrow or one day, then you're probably right. And we here in the medical community will always be here to support you when the time comes. So go for it.